Hello, my name is Mr. Polk and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'd like to take a look at making mac and cheese, but the twist on it is I want to focus on making a really nice bechamel first and then turning that into a cheese sauce and then making the mac and cheese. So with a bechamel, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a white roux. So before I show you how to make the roux, uh, I just want to talk about something that we're going to need to use that's special for making the bechamel. And that is when you bring the the milk to a boil or the cream or in our case the half and half. When you bring it to a boil you want to add some flavor to it through something called an onion piquet. And what that is is you take a small onion then you take a bay leaf and lay it over the onion and then you use cloves, the whole clove, and you use them kind of like a, a push pin, like a thumbtack, and you hold the, the bay leaf onto the onion and then you'll put that into your cream as it comes to a boil and that will add flavor to your stock. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we make the roux and how we make the bechamel. Okay, so you can see I have the, the butter in the pan is starting to melt. A note on this, uh, this is something called clarified butter. Uh, let me clarify. Clarified butter is where we melt the butter. Uh, and then as we melt it, we, we skim off all of the milk solids from the top. And then we decant it into another container to get rid of the water. If you've ever used regular butter and it starts to spit and spat at you, this eliminates that. Once you get your butter melted, then you're going to put in your flour. And for this roux, um, it's always equal weight. We're using about three ounces of the clarified butter, and we're going to put in three ounces of uh, all-purpose flour. So I'm just, and the trick here is you just put it in all at once, and then take your spatula, whatever you're using, and start by just bringing it together. And once you bring it together, it's going to look like a paste. Now. We're making a cheese sauce, which is uh, being started from a bechamel. And a bechamel um, is a, a white sauce, so we're going to use a white roux. So what we're going to do is we're going to cook this roux out. Okay. So right now we're trying to stir it, get rid of all of our lumps uh, from the flour. And then it's going to start to cook. And you know, just like when you're making bread and things like that, you know, you know that flour will, will, will brown and burn. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're stirring it so that doesn't happen. And the, the, we want to keep the roux this white color. Okay. We don't want it to turn blonde or brown. However, you don't want to undercook your roux. Okay. So you need to cook it so that it just starts to get a, a hint of color. If you undercook it, what's going to happen there is you're just going to taste flour. Okay, and nobody really wants to have that flour taste in their mac and cheese. So it's important that we cook it through. So as that cooks for another minute or so, you can see in the other pot I have my half and half coming up to a boil. And as soon as it comes up to a boil, I'll turn it off. And it has that onion pique in already that I was talked about. So this roux is looking good. I don't want to give it any more color than that because I do want to keep it a white roux. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let it cool for a little bit while uh, I'm bringing that pot up to a boil. Because here's the thing. You want to have your roux and your liquid at different temperatures. You can either put a cooler roux into boiling liquid or you can put cold liquid into a hot roux. Um, I like this method because it's faster in that while I'm making the roux over here, all right, while I'm making that, um, this is going to set up over there. So let's go ahead and check on this and see where it's at. It looks like it's pretty much coming to a boil. So what you're going to do is take your roux and you're going to go ahead and put it in. So I'm going to stir, stir it up a little bit, and then I am going to take out uh, my onion pique. I don't want that to be in the way. So you can see that guy. That gave wonderful flavor to our cream. And then we can go ahead and put the roux in. Get it all in there. And then stir it up really good to get rid of the lumps. And then what we need to do to continue our sauce is we have to bring this uh, back to a simmer. Okay. So now we have our bechamel, and you can see that the way this works is a roux only will thicken a sauce when it comes to a boil. The starch won't do anything 
until it comes to a boil. So you can see that that roux has thickened this now. We've got a, a really nice uh, bechamel. This bechamel will do what we call nappe in that it will coat the back of a spoon. Okay, so this looks great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the cream cheese. And one of the things that I like to do when I make mac and cheese is I like to add a little bit of cream cheese in there, um, a little bit of Philadelphia's finest. And that I like to bring in while it's still on the stove and still simmering. Once that is smooth, then what we're going to do is stop the heat and then we're going to add the cheeses okay, and bring it together. And that's going to create the base of our base sauce. Okay. So right now, the, the bechamel is nice and smooth. And if you were worried about the roux, if you were worried about lumps, um, you could run this through a chinois. Um, but with this, I like to just keep it going because uh, we have it measured out to make the mac and cheese. And to your chinois, you're going to end up losing uh, some of your product. So we just keep stirring this. So we got the cream cheese in. That's looking great. Okay. Beautiful consistency. And now we're going to bring in the cheeses. And the cheeses, we're going to do um, three ounces of a Monterey Jack. And then we're going to do three ounces of Swiss. And I'm going to stop my heat. And I'm just going to stir this in. I'm just letting the heat at this point. Okay. And this is important so nothing separates. The heat from the bechamel is melting the cheese. Okay. And then I'm going to finish with the cheddar, about 10 ounces of cheddar. And I'll use the three-quart pot, and it'll start to fill up in here. But you just start bringing it around and, and work with it. Try to keep as much of the cheese in the pot as you can. And this is going to give you a uh, wonderful flavor. Let me stir that up. So now you get that, you know, whitish, orangish color. Um, you know, you could do, if you wanted to, you could easily do just all cheddar. But I like to do a blend, all right? You could do like a cheddar jack, but I just put the Monterey Jack in separate. And here you can see that this has made a beautifully uh, creamy cheese sauce. And again, I have the heat turned off. This is just being made underneath the heat coming from the bechamel, okay? The next step is we gotta season this before it turns into our mac and cheese. And there's a, a couple uh, seasonings that I like to use to kinda stay with a little bit traditional, a little bit new. Um, I like to put a little bit of nutmeg uh, because nutmeg is a, a traditional uh, seasoning that you would put into your uh, bechamel. So I like to put a touch of the nutmeg, okay, just you know, a little, little something, something, and then give it a little cayenne, okay. And, and again, the, the cayenne, it just gives it a little flavor. Some people put hot sauce in. It's not there to make it hot. It's just there to add a little balance of flavor. A, a touch of mustard powder, okay, and then some pepper. And then you got to taste it because of the cheeses, but if you want, you could put a touch of salt in too, and then stir all of that up. And then now you have your cheese sauce that's ready to get turned into mac and cheese. So now that we have our, our cheese sauce, we're ready to go. Um, and the other thing you had to do is prepare your, your macaroni noodles. Um, I already have my macaroni noodles prepared. Uh, bring a pot of water. If you're going to do this recipe, is a larger recipe. It uses the full pound, the full box. So I bring like six to eight quarts of water to a boil, lightly salt it with kosher salt, and then I put in my noodles. Once it comes to a boil, they cook about seven minutes till al dente. And then if you're ready to go, you, don't, you can just strain them um, and use them right away. If you're going to sit, then go ahead and rinse them under cold water so they don't stick together and keep cooking. And now we take our wonderful cheese sauce that we made, and we just pour it right in there. Oh, it looks so good. I wish you could smell it. And you're going to bring all that in there, nice and creamy. Get all of that cheesy goodness in there. And then now is where we carefully fold it all together. Oh, that just looks so good. There's it's nothing more satisfying than seeing a nice homemade 
cheesy mac and cheese versus something that, you know, you're just using a powder and, and reconstituting. I mean, just look at that. It just looks great. It smells great, and it's going to taste even better. So once you mix it all up, then you need to bake it, okay? Now, technically, it is cooked. I mean, you could start, you know, eating this now, and some people just like to eat it right like this. But when you cook it, um, you, the sauce will tighten up a little bit, all right? And then you can also put, a lot of people like the crumb coating, okay? So let's take a look at that. So what we're going to do is take some of this and put it into a ramekin. Now you could bake this in these individual ramekins like I'm going to do or in class we'll use smaller pans or at home you could just throw this in a 9 by 13. Uh, what I'm going to do here is scoop some in. So just take, oh look at that, oh. put some of that in there, put some on the other side. Okay. Oh, that looks great. A little too much in the middle. Okay, so now a lot of people, when they bake it in the oven, then really enjoy having a, a crust, a crumb topping. It's uh, the topping kind of gives you that balance. So what we're going to do is take a bowl and we're going to use uh, panko breadcrumbs. All right, put those in, and then we're just going to put in uh, two ounces of, of melted butter and just stir it around. And at first, it's going to kind of clump, but then when you get all of the crumbs in there, it's going to coat it. And you could just put uh, breadcrumbs. And you could also flavor these. If you wanted to add a little paprika or something, you could. Um, you could just put the plain breadcrumbs on. But by doing it this way, they've got butter. They've got a fat on them, so they're going to brown in the oven as this bakes. Okay. And then all we have to do is take our ramekin and just carefully sprinkle on all right, some of the crumbs. Okay, let's put some of those guys on there. And then now this guy is going to go in the oven. Get some more on there. Oh, that looks beauteous. Okay, so let's get this right in the oven. Okay, let's take a look at our mac and cheese. Oh, this is beauteous. Check it out. This is what you want. It's got the creaminess. You can see that it kind of puffed up almost souffle style because of all of the, the cheese and the goodness in there. Um, our crumbs on top brown beautifully. Um, this is what you want your mac and cheese to be. So here you can see your finished product. And whether you bake it in a small ramekin for individual servings or you just bake it in the large 9 by 13, you're going to get this look. It's going to bake until it's bubbly. Um, you're going to have the crumbs on top. We're going to look gorgeous. And this is where it's at. And this shows you how we were able to start with a traditional French sauce. We made a bechamel from the roux. Uh, the white roux made the bechamel, the onion piquet. Then we added the cheddar cheese, the Monterey Jack, the Swiss, stirred all that all together and made a, a beautiful cheese sauce. Folded that in with the macaroni noodles to create a wonderful base. Put it in our, our, our vessel and baked it. And here's where you can see how you can really have something that, you know, probably could be um, your next family's favorite. And it's nice to know that, you know, you made it from scratch versus a convenience method of a, of a powder and some liquid. So with that, I'd like to say thank you for cooking with me today. And I can't wait to cook with you real soon right here in Mr. Polk's Kitchen.